Hey guys, in this new tutorial, we're going to be covering the uh, mat options in Redshift. And so I've noticed that a lot of people in the Facebook group and in the Redshift forums still use the old deprecated shadow catcher shader. And that's just the old way of doing things. You don't need to use that anymore. And the reason it has some problems is just because it's a shader. So it overrides the shaders on your objects which you know you, you don't want to have to assign and reassign shaders you just want to shade your object and if you need to mat out an object you just turn it on and so that's what the mat system does um i've pretty much fully uh, moved on to houdini now guys so most of my tutorials now are going to be in houdini but <clears throat> the uh principles that i'm i'm showing you guys here apply to whatever you know whatever app you're using so if you're using cinema 4d maya 3ds max whatever the uh, same principles will apply just the uh, option locations are in different areas depending on the package you're using so anyways the uh so we've got this scene here right and depending on the package you select your objects so let's say i select this this object here and under your redshift object properties you'll have different options. You'll usually have, you know, wh wherever you find your displacement and tessellation options, you typically have your visibility options and you also have mat. Now the mat options is what I'm talking about. So you could use this instead of the shadow catcher and that way you don't override the shaders on your scene. So let's actually just start an IPR. So I'm gonna just start this IPR here so you can see what we've got. So I've got this scene, the couple little diamond shapes here and our ground surface. Oh, and, and while I'm actually IPRing this, a new feature that got added to the Redshift render view that's really neat is the point click focus. So a lot of people have been asking for this for um, a way to just click and assign the depth of field. So this was added recently. That's what this button up here does. So you click this and that means the depth of field click is activated. And so if you click on different things, so if I click over here, it'll shift the depth, uh, depth of field to focus on this object. See, now the foreground is out of focus. Or if I click way out here in the background, everything is even more out of focus. If I click in the foreground, now the background's out of focus right so we're going to just focus on this little diamond up here this one that's up close so our background is out of focus now okay cool so <clears throat> now how can we let's say i want to cut out this diamond right here and i want to mat out the diamond how do i do that right what's the method of of doing that so if i select that object and you could either select it in the viewport like this or you could select it in your objects list and you click on that now that our object selected and you go under mat if you enable mat mode let's click that you'll notice that it cut it out perfectly up a nice perfect cutout now if we look at the alpha everything is still white though and so the question is, why is that the case? So I'll explain to you what these other parameters do. So right now, the uh, show background is activated. So this back here is actually my HDR that you're seeing in the background. So if I were to, let's just disable that. And let's select our grid, our ground plane and go to the mat and enable that you see it's now our HDR background and the reason is because I have show background activated <coughs> so what happens if I unclick this it just creates black but our alpha as you notice is still all white so why is that also going on and the reason is because here we have the option alpha one. So in Redshift, alpha one means 
the alpha is white. It's activated. If you want an alpha to be black, you want it to be at zero. So if we now move this down to zero and check our alpha, now our background or where our ground plane was is black and our diamonds now are in white. Cool. Let's switch back to our beauty. So what do the next uh, options do? Apply to secondary rays. This applies to like the GI, which is what secondary rays are. And reflections and refraction. So if we look inside, for example, let's, let's zoom in here. You can see that we can see our old background in the refraction. So if I activate this, it cuts out the reflections in the inside and some of the GI. So that's if you want to cut out more of that uh, information and map that out. So if I go into our alpha, you'll see that now there's kind of like these gray areas inside of our reflection and our refraction. So let's disable that for now. Now another pretty useful thing is the uh, include in puzzle mats. I don't really ever use the affected by matte lights, so I'm not really going to bother with that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think the other stuff's more important, and this is meant to be a really quick tutorial anyways. So the include in puzzle mats is as it sounds. It includes the uh, influence into the puzzle mat. So if we come into our render settings, go to output, AOV, add an AOV, we go to puzzle mat, and we're going to do this by object ID. We're going to do just one, two, three, and we go back to our object level. And so we're going to make our grid object ID one, one of the diamonds object ID two, another diamond object ID three. So what that means is if we make a full render here, let's let that render and come back to our mat setting. So right now it's off. So it's not being included into our puzzle mats. So if we switch our AOV to puzzle mat, you'll see that we've got our blue and our green, but no red. And that's our floor because we don't have it included. So if I activate that and re-render, now it's included on our floor for our puzzle mats. So something to keep in mind, if you're gonna be using the mat, but you want a puzzle mat for other purposes, make sure you activate this. Otherwise it will not show up inside of your puzzle mats. All right, switch over to beauty. So we already went over alpha, that just controls your alpha. And next one we could talk about is reflection scale. And so reflection scale, if right now it's at zero, so that means that there is no reflection influence on our surface. If we make this one and re-render, you'll see that now it's in our reflection on the ground, but only the reflection, not the diffuse, not anything else. And if we switch over to our alpha, our alpha still is only black and white. See? So pretty useful also. Let's turn that off. And actually let's activate IPR, but we'll use um, just the regular IPR. And our refraction scale, I don't think this will matter because the ground isn't refractive. So for this example, it's not really gonna make a difference but it's doing the same thing as our refraction, our reflection scale, where it just brings back in that influence on top of our mat. Our diffuse scale is gonna do the same thing, but diffuse. And actually, I think this floor has almost no diffuse influence anyways. It's mostly just reflective 
And finally, we have our shadow enable. And this would work if we had shadows being cast, and there actually is none. So let's, uh, well, let's see if we can affect the alpha. Maybe there is some shadows, we just can't see them. Nope, doesn't look like it. If I make the color red, yeah, there's no, there's no real defined shadows. So let me, uh, make another example scene that'll show exactly what I'm talking about. So we can discuss these options here. So I'll be right back. All right, guys. So here I'm back with a scene that will better illustrate my example here. And so here's just a simple scene, just a plane, this donut shape and one area light coming in from the upper left. And so if we activate the mat, you know, here we go. We've got our mat. We check our alpha. It's white though. So let's make our alpha zero. So now we've got our donut cut out. And now I can actually show you the diffuse scale, what, what I meant earlier. If we increase that, you'll see that the diffuse influence is there. And if we go to alpha though, it's cut out completely. Pretty neat. So we'll turn this off. And so now we can actually also show you how the uh, shadow options work. And actually to better illustrate that also, let's uh, duplicate our little torus here. And we'll just move it into location, shrink it down a little. so that it's inside of the shadow. And so now if we, uh, and actually let's, uh, no, we'll, we'll keep it uh, as a mat. The uh, shadow influence now is how the shadow of another object onto it is going to affect it. And so what do I mean by that? So first, let me uh, show you the ground. Okay, so these objects, right, are casting shadows onto our plane. And let's actually disable the mat for this one so you can still see it. And so this object shadow and this object shadow is affecting our plane. So if I select our plane, let's go to our grid and enable our mat. And actually, um, just have it like this, it cuts out, right? And if we activate shadow enable and we change the color to something you can see, like red, there you go. Now you'll notice that we've got our shadow cut out. Now, that means that it's receiving shadows from mats. So this, this uh, donut that's matted out is also going to cast this shadow. If I disable that, it no longer casts the shadow. So it's cut out. And then the effect alpha is obviously what it sounds like. So if we switch over to alpha and check that on, it should affect the alpha, but for some reason it's not. <laughs> Oh, that's because our alpha is set to zero. There we go. So if we turn on alpha to one, you'll see that it adds it to our alpha. Cool. Let's switch back to our beauty. And then we have the transparency option. So this controls how transparent the shadow effect is. Zero is 100% opaque, solid, and one is 100% transparent. And I believe it has the same influence on the alpha. Yeah. So if you swap that over, you can control how strong it is. And of course, the color lets you change the color to whatever you want. Oops. Ah. 
Yeah, yeah, you get the idea. So lots of lots of options here with the uh, matte options, and the great thing is it doesn't override the shader on your object. So you could just when you don't need it anymore, just check enable, disable, and you could actually connect these parameters to your takes or your render layers and other apps and stuff like that, so that they only activate during certain passes. But yeah, hopefully um, you guys, you know, kind of understand how these options work now. And these parameters are available for all objects. The only objects that I believe don't work with it currently are volumes, but everything else should work. So yeah, don't use the uh, deprecated shadow catcher. It's old, it's from the 1.0 days. Um, ever since 2.0, the uh, mat system is what you're supposed to use. So um, yeah, hopefully you guys, you know, that are, that are wondering how to use this or how to get mats out in Redshift will learn something from this tutorial. Um, just want to say thanks again, everybody, for all the support on Patreon. You know, I'm, I'm enjoying making all those great long in-depth tutorials for you guys and also all the support on YouTube. So hope you guys enjoy the videos. Thanks.